Number 17. Water from a fire hose is directed horizontally against a wall at a rate of 50 kg per second and a speed of 42 meters per second. Calculate the magnitude of the force exerted on the wall, assuming the water's horizontal momentum is reduced to zero. All right. So uh, this problem almost feels uh, like it doesn't have enough information that we need, right, to solve, but we do. Um, and they also give us this weird thing, right, like a weight, uh, not a weight, excuse me, a mass per second, right, of the water coming out. So if we had to take a guess, right, I mean, they're talking about force and uh, they're saying that the momentum is reduced to zero. So I'm thinking about momentum force. Hmm, what formula? I'm going to use this formula over here on the right hand side. All right. So let's detail that over here. So it says the change in momentum of an object is equal to the force applied to that object to change its momentum multiplied by the time over which that uh, force is occurring. So now to find the force, I basically have to divide out the time, right, from both sides. Okay, I'm just going to switch then the two sides because I like writing it this way. So force is equal to then the change in momentum over the time. Okay, expanding this a little more, change in momentum, right, we can simply write, uh, rewrite that as uh, the mass multiplied by the final velocity minus the initial velocity, right, all divided by the time over which that force is acting. So let's take a look. If we want to calculate force, we need all three things, right? So do we know, let's first start, do we know the uh, initial velocity of the water? Yeah, we do, right? It told us 42. Great. Do we know the final velocity of the water? We might say, well, they didn't tell me the final velocity. They did tell me, though, that the momentum is reduced to zero. But you have to remember that momentum is simply equal to the mass multiplied by the velocity. And assuming that the object has some mass, which the water does, the only way the momentum can be zero is if the velocity is zero. So therefore, they actually did tell us the final velocity here. Right, so the final velocity is zero. So we can kind of just cancel that out. Okay, now here's the thing. Do we know the mass? Well, I know the mass per second, but I don't know the mass. Okay, do you know the time? No, I don't really know the time, right? It didn't say that, it didn't say it anywhere. Okay, hmm. so let's actually do this, right? Why don't we do this? Let's rewrite this down. Let's just get rid of the uh, VF. Okay, so it's going to be negative, all right, uh, because it's just negative VI. So it's negative M VI over T, correct? All right, now, I want you to notice something. Notice this. You have the mass here divided by the time, correct? I mean, you also have the initial velocity too. But I could rewrite this thing, right? I could rewrite this to look this way, that the force is equal to negative m over t times vi. All right, I, I didn't do any trickery there, right? I can easily do that, right? Now, what's interesting is what are the units of mass? Kilograms. What are the units of time? Seconds. And do you have a value in your problem that gives you kilogram per second? omg -ness. right? There it is. 50 kilogram per second. So actually they gave us this value. Interesting, right? So they actually gave us this value and they told us the initial velocity of the water was 42 meters per second. Cool. So guess what? Plug it all in. So here the force now is equal to negative uh, the mass per time value, which was 50. Okay. And then times, right? Times the initial velocity. And I assume that it's traveling to the right here, so it's positive, so this is 42.0. So just throw it into the calculator. So let's take negative 50 times 42, and we get a value of negative 2.1. So negative 2.1 times 10 to the, what do we got? Three. Newtons. All right, so now this is, what is this actually? I mean, this is the force, but the force of what? This is the force that the wall exerts on the water, right? Because it's negative. And negative in terms of, the, in terms of how I frame this problem, negative is pointing to the left, right? So basically what I just found in terms of that negative sign, the value, I actually found the force that the wall is exerting on the water. But guess what? Newton's third law says that for every... Force is an equal but opposite force, right? So if the if I found the force the wall is exerting on the water, guess what? 
I also know the force that the water is exerting on the wall. It's just equal but opposite in sign. And that's what they asked me to find, right? What's the magnitude of the force exerted on the wall? So basically, my answer here would be a positive, okay? Not the negative, but the positive 2.1 times 10 to the 3 newtons, okay? For the reasons I just discussed. Now, in terms of positive versus negative, it all depends upon how I frame the question. I've said this now in a bunch of other problems. So, you know, it, if, if you turn the problem around, you would have gotten uh, the force to be negative. And you would have been equally right, assuming how you uh, created the problem was fine. But in the problem, they didn't give us any guidance right, as to what direction. So it's up to me to choose. And in that particular case, I can make it whatever I want, uh, but my answer is consistent with my picture. All right, and that's what's most important. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. I'll see you in the next question. Take care.